Hey guys, this is Rick at Tasty Guitar. Today I'm going to be breaking down some classic soul guitar playing from Phil Upchurch. Probably not a household name among most guitarists, but he played with a who's who of the music industry. House guitar player at Chess Records in the 60s, backing up all the blues giants. Played with guys like Curtis Mayfield, Donnie Hathaway, Michael Jackson, the list goes on and on. And today we're going to be breaking down a lot of stuff from Donnie Hathaway's live album in the early 70s. One of the best live recordings of all time in the soul genre. Be sure to come by TastyGuitar.com, subscribe in the bottom of the homepage to get the free tab on this lesson, and check out the description below for information about membership. Tune so up and let's get started. All right, guys, of course you recognize this is coming out of Marvin Gaye's What's Going On, great tune. But this is Donny Hathaway's live version, and Phil Upchurch played this lick, kind of moving from that E major 7 down to the C sharp minor. And this is a pretty standard R&B fill, but it's just about the placement of it which makes it so perfect, just fits right exactly between the vocal lines. Okay, and this is starting just right on the top of an E chord here. There's your E bar chord. We're just taking the top two notes, the B and the high E there. Gonna hit that hammer onto the 14th fret for a little bit of color. Back. And then just hit a couple dead strings. And that's in 16th notes. So that's one E and a. And then you're gonna go down to this uh, shape right here, the F sharp together with the B, hammer on to the major third, then down to the root. So, so far the first two beats of this fill would be. Again. And then you're just gonna end it by going back to that shape, which kind of implies an E major nine. And then just resolving it by going to the top of that C sharp minor chord there at the ninth fret. So all together, one, two, three, four. And to get the right feel and tone on this, I suggest keep things pretty light. We're not really hitting things very strong. Just a light little brush across the strings, and I also like to play it up on the fingerboard a little bit to get a great uh, warm tone out of it. So again, just a simple short little fill in between the vocal lines, but a lot of times that is exactly what is needed. All right, guys, you recognize this from the ghetto, another great Donny Hathaway song, and this is coming from that live version again. It's a B flat minor going to an E flat, okay? And most people play it as an E flat seven chord or an E flat nine chord, perhaps. But he, what he's doing here is he's going to an E flat six chord. But really what is making the way he's approaching this rhythm so funky is those staccato strums on the downbeat. All right, you're going to be playing this voicing of a B flat minor seven chord. It's just coming right off the bar chord shape right up there, the 13th fret. Uh, you're going to hit the top part of the chord first, just 16th notes on beat one, hitting, trying to hit the top three strings only. Right there. On beat two, you're going to come down strong, kind of accented on that strum, and also cut it off very quickly. Really cut it off quickly. On the and of beat two, you're going to try to hit the bottom three notes instead of the top three notes. Okay, so you're going to go down and hit that note that's on the, the D string a little bit. Let that ring. And then you do that same thing again. Then on the and of beat four, you're going to go down to this chord, which is D6, but you're just going to use that in passing to get to the E flat six in the next measure, where we continue much of the same type of rhythm. So I'll play the entire rhythm very slowly. Again. Pick 
it up a little bit now. So this is a very important technique in R&B and soul rhythm guitar. It's that kind of contrast between the high stabbing staccato strums and the lower part of the chord. Hey guys, surprise, surprise, another great lick from the Donny Hathaway live album. And this lick was played in the tune Hey Girl, going from that E major seven down to the D major seven. And this is played over the D major seven and starting by sliding up to the E note there at the 12th fret, right on beat four. One, two, three, four. Slide right up there. And then you're gonna do a pull off move and then slide down to the ninth fret. So that's pulling off the 12th fret down to the 11th, 10th, sliding down from the 10th to the 9th. So this is this lick very slow. Again. All right, but you're going to land on that C sharp there at the 9th fret right on beat one of the following measure. One, two, three, four, one. And from that C sharp, you're gonna continue down in a D major seven arpeggio. So that is your C sharp, your A, your F sharp, and again on the C sharp down there at the 11th fret on the D string. So, so far we'd have this. Again. And pay attention to the fingering here. I think you should do it the way I'm doing it. One, two, three, and then bring the second finger over the top. Hit that C sharp again twice more, down to the B note, ending on the C sharp again. So this is the phrasing. guys now this is coming out of Breezin by George Benson and that was Phil Upchurch playing the rhythm guitar on that track what a resume huh now the changes for the tune are D or D major 7 to a B minor 7 E minor 7 to a G over A okay so basically 1 6 2 5 in the key of D now he didn't play the same rhythm throughout he put some nice little fills and tasty stuff in there and this is one of them so this was starting right down there at the fifth and sixth fret sliding into this and that is just kind of giving you the sound of a D major nine chord. Then going down to the fifth and root of that chord. Okay, then it goes to the B minor seven and he just breaks it up and then goes to the top intervals right there, the D note and the F sharp, the uh, flat third and fifth of a B minor seven. So it's kind of giving you some rhythmic variety here by breaking up the chords into intervals. And then does a nice little slide down from the seventh to the fifth fret. Then we're on the E minor seven and just playing this E minor seven down here at the third fret. That is your flat seven, your fifth and your flat third. Right there. And then one interesting thing he did here was go up and grab this right on the downbeat of beat two. And that's right where the snare drum is. And it just kind of helps bring that uh, snare drum out a little bit more. And then back. And that's that rhythm. 
So, so far we have this. E minor. And then the final part here, we go to that G over A. And he's just doing these uh, little octave thing right here, the ninth and twelfth fret. And then up there to the B and F sharp on top. So all together, here's the rhythm real slow. All right, so that is just a great way to break up some chord changes to make it sound interesting. Break up the intervals. Instead of playing, you know, a three note uh, voicing, maybe break it up into two groups of two notes. So instead of just playing, say, a D uh, major seven there, play these two, the seventh and the third, and then play maybe the seventh together with the fifth down here. You can get some really great sounds by doing that.